Hey guys, and welcome to a brand new episode of Looking Back at the Greats. Today we are looking at the legendary Samsung Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge. Are they still worth buying in 2018? That's the question. In a world of infinities and notches, is this design still relevant? Is the Galaxy S7 family still the best after the S8 and the Note 8? Or should you consider buying something like a Galaxy A8? In this video, I'm gonna be answering all these questions and give you a final answer whether you should buy the Galaxy S7 or S7 Edge in 2018 or not. All right, before we begin, a quick history lesson for you. With Galaxy S7, Samsung perfected the design that they introduced with the Galaxy S6 and also clear up some of the mistakes. So gone is the camera bump, now it is completely flushed in with the surface, feels really good. And they brought back the micro SD card tray for storage expansion. They also improved the design of the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge with a much better edge detection. Not only this design brought premiumness to the table, it also brought water and dust resistance. We have IP68 water and dust resistant rating. And of course, how can we forget the Galaxy S7 was the last Samsung S flash phone to have a flat screen. It's truly a forgotten warrior but they had to make a decision and they released the Galaxy Note 7 which had this curve slash flat screen combination. So design wise even in 2018 these phones are still super premium. Even for 2016 standard the Galaxy S7 Edge was definitely ahead of its time. Now things have changed, phones are going bezel-less, even the mid-range phones have this infinity design. As I'm using this phone I definitely realize that they don't have that futuristic look of the today's era. But still, I kinda miss the convenience of having the home button up front, especially the fingerprint scanner, which is super easy to reach. You just have to press the button and it just unlocks the phone right away. In my opinion, the Galaxy S7 family provides the best experience when it comes to the old era, especially the S7 Edge with its Edge design. It's still having a pretty awesome Super AMOLED Quad HD display. It just looks fantastic. Even in outdoor situation, you have the best results. It's bright enough and, and thanks to the Android 7.0 NuGet, you get the ability to downgrade the resolution from Quad HD to 1080p in order to conserve battery. And believe me, guys, this option does make a difference in your daily day-to-day -day usage and also when playing games or watching media. Now, in terms of camera, the Galaxy S7 family brought the biggest camera change from Samsung. It's the 12 diesel camera with f1.7 aperture, which is actually pretty much the same as the Galaxy S8 with just a new sensor. I've actually done a camera comparison between the S7 and the S8 and the camera picture quality differences are really less like you can't tell the difference it's still pretty good camera in all situation in almost all situations you get amazing quality pictures and of course it is amazing in video as well we have 4k at 30 FPS with the most fastest autofocus that I've ever tried on any phone. So camera wise, the S7 and S7 Edge, they will give you quality as good as the latest Galaxy S8. You should be able to grab these phones for like 300 to $350 range. And I have to say with all the features that they're providing, they're definitely worth the money. And it's hard to recommend a mid-range phone when there's such an awesome option available. The Galaxy S7 Edge was the only Galaxy S flagship to have 3600 millimeter battery and believe me it is still a pretty good phone when it comes to the battery life. I've been getting 5 hours plus screen on time on my Galaxy S7 Edge and a 3.5 hour screen on time on the S7. And they're also the last Galaxy S phone to have the USB 2.0 port so while it is not type C it still sport fast charging and they charge up almost as quick as the Samsung Galaxy S8 family. Now let's talk about the main issue with buying used phones or old flash phones which is the performance is it still capable of giving you a smooth usage that is the question that everyone has when they're buying a used phone and to answer this question I'm gonna perform a speed test comparison of the Galaxy S7 against Samsung's best phone which is the Galaxy S8 of course it will get replaced by the Galaxy S9 pretty soon but the S8 is still the current top dog with the Exynos 8895 processor now before I show you guys some performance I want to highlight some of the differences in the software so Samsung did update the Galaxy S7 Edge and the S7 to Android 7.0 NuGet but it is actually running a 
combination of TouchBase UI and Samsung Experience UI. So if you look at the home screen and the app door, it's not actually the Samsung Experience UI. Some of the elements are definitely missing. The notification area, the quick setting panel is definitely similar. Very similar look with the settings application as well. Some of the useful features are presented to the old Galaxy S7 family, especially the ability to change the screen resolution. But overall, there are things missing with the S7 family, but we'll see if the Galaxy S7 can keep up against the best of Samsung right now. And this test will surely help you to decide whether you wanna purchase the S7 in 2018 or not. All right, let's test out the performance. I thought it would be better to show you guys uh, the speed test rather than just talking about it. So I'm just gonna do a quick boot up comparison here. Galaxy S7 Edge, Galaxy S8. And uh, this is not just an ordinary Galaxy S8, it is the Oreo powered Galaxy S8. So it's on top of its game. Uh, the S7 Edge is booting up, of course. It's still running NuGet. It will get Oreo pretty soon, but it is uh, with its latest software things installed. So you can see the S8 boots up faster, about five second difference, five, six second difference between the two boot up times. I have to say, not bad for a two year old phone, but let's get right into the performance real quick. Everything is close up in the background. So we're gonna start off uh, with the first app, which is going to be phone dialer. So here we go. And as you can see, the S8 was just a slightly tiny bit quicker there. Settings about the same on both phones. Let's move towards some third party stuff. So first up we have Subway Surfer game and launching games will help us uh, seeing the difference between the processor speed. So you can see the S8 is done and the S7 Edge is still taking some time and now it's done as well. So you can see not a huge difference there, probably two, three second difference there, but uh, let's get right into the Mario Run game. And okay. Going pretty equal. And the Galaxy S7 Edge actually faster in loading up the Super Mario Run. Wow, that was shocking. Let's launch Korra. And I think a little bit quicker on the S8, but pretty much not a huge difference, you could say. Uh, scrolling and everything looks pretty smooth. SoundCloud, about the same. Snapchat, Galaxy S8, Spotify, Galaxy S7 Edge faster, Smash Hit, another game. And both are equal in loading up of this game. Instagram, and faster on the Galaxy S7 Edge with the latest feed. Let's check my profile. And that got loaded up faster as well on the S7 Edge. Guys, you can see the proof. I mean, my S7 Edge is an old phone. It's, it's been in my drawer for quite some time, but it is kicking ass. Last, we'll be launching the cameras at the same time. Let's go. And that was also a draw. About the same on both phones. Time for some browser war. So I'm using the Google Chrome browser on these phones because the Samsung internet browser is actually crashing on my S7 Edge for some reason. But nonetheless, it doesn't really matter. We're going to get right into the first website, which is going to be wikipedia.org. And as you can see, it is faster on the Galaxy S8 a little bit. Uh, again, the S7 Edge was right behind. Scrolling and everything looks smooth. Same thing with zooming in and out. Guys, I have to say the difference between these two phones performance-wise is actually the same as the time when I did the test uh, when the first Galaxy S8 was released. So uh, you can see that uh, both phones are on the website at the end and the Galaxy S8 finishes up quicker followed by the S7 Edge. I have to say impressive performance by both phones, I'm really happy with the Galaxy S7s, still it is going strong. Let's check out the RAM management. So first up we have the phone dialer, settings, Subway Surfers, still there on both phones, Mario Run, Aura, SoundCloud, Snapchat, Spotify, Smash Hit, Instagram, we're back to the browser. So amazing RAM management performance on both phones. Again, the Galaxy S7 Edge is the star 
of this show. This test proves that the Galaxy S7 Edge is still a pretty capable phone. And if you're concerned about performance, just don't be because this phone is going to work really well uh, with all your applications and games. And the camera is also as good as the Galaxy S8 and the battery life is pretty good. It's a complete package and you can save a lot of money by just spending $350 on the S7 Edge. That's the price, common price that I've seen on eBay, Amazon. And uh, this price, I think this phone is definitely worth it. My recommendation would be the Galaxy S7 Edge just because of its 36 mAh battery, definitely performs super good. Of course, it has this edge display, so it doesn't really feel outdated compared to these full screen designs. But yeah, I have to say, S7 Edge is still kicking ass. You can spend less on the Galaxy S7 if you want to, but S7 Edge, I think it's going to be my ultimate recommendation. It is still worth buying in 2018. The display, the camera, the battery, and of course the performance, which was the main issue for most of the people because people think that the latest product is always the fastest one, but here you can see that even a nearly two-year Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge it still performs pretty awesome and it's a proof that Samsung phones they don't lag anymore Samsung has definitely fixed everything ever since the S7 family was released they have fixed their softer UI big time and it's only getting perfect with the newer phone so. so yeah guys thank you so much for tuning in the legends are still worth it if you guys want me to cover some other phones some other old legendary phones let me know and yeah I will love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below Subscribe to the channel if you haven't and follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm most active and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.